Hello here from Ocean Swift Synthesis and today I want to show you our Xbox 360 MIDI controller a little bit about how it works um, how to set it up as well and uh, what you can do with it and of course where to grab it and how we're offering it to our website and all of that so let's get right down to it so we've built a Xbox 360 MIDI controller um, take uh, um, Notice that it is just the original Xbox 360 controller. Uh, it doesn't really work with other controllers at the moment. Um, maybe in the future we can make other stuff. But uh, if you have an Xbox 360 or if you want to um, buy a controller, I think it's actually uh, worth it to buy a controller for this. You can get a wired controller for the Xbox for around 20 bucks. Uh, you can get a wireless one for around 35 bucks. And then you'll need this little wireless thing for a few more bucks. So for anywhere between, let's say, 20 to 45 US dollars, you can get a really cool controller with a 2XY. Um, you know what, let's talk about the, the, the controls themselves in a minute, because this is part of the thing here. So let's look at the um, device itself that we have built. Um, first of all, there's two versions of this. This is the standalone version, and there's also a VSTi version. I actually prefer myself the standalone version, um, because the standalone version allows you to control both external hardware and VSTi. Uh, while the VSTi version um, lets you control, um, we haven't, I haven't seen a DAW that will let the VSTi version control uh, other plugins inside the DAW. So if you want to control your VST plugins or your native plugins inside the DAW, then you will need to use the um, standalone executable version. If you just want to control your hardware scenes, then the, um, there's no need to use the executable because it's obviously a little bit nicer to have the VSTi saved within your project and everything. Uh, I don't even know if it's easier, you know. Uh, I, I will actually use more of the standalone, but of course you can do whatever you want. So first of all, uh, before I show you the, the, the... We talk a little bit about the device, but before we look at it itself, let's look, take a few minutes to how to set it up, because this will be a thing. Because many of you might have an Xbox controller at home, but you've never actually connected it to the computer. Uh, even though you can probably you can play games and all of that, still I'm guessing a lot of you never never have done this. So, if you have a wired one, it's actually much e easier. But you do pretty much the same process. I mean, you can follow along here. Uh, for the wireless one, obviously you need to, uh, um, of course, install the, the wireless driver and all of that. So, what you need to do, first of all, assuming you have a wireless, uh, you plug this into the USB. Uh, you go in, you can type the, all this, I will put all these links uh, in the video itself, you can look under the video and you'll find these links, but uh, you can also just Google this, how to connect Xbox 360 wireless controller for Windows, uh, the driver for it and all that. Uh, take into account that our, our plugin, it needs to have this driver installed. If you don't install this driver, uh, then you will not have um, the correct uh, DLL installed for our plugin to work. So you have to install this. Okay, so over here you choose your operating system, you download this little Xbox 360 accessories software thingy. Um, all it is, is is this small thing over here. You don't need to use it with our plugin, but it installs the driver as well. So once you install the driver, um, you know, you can go here and see a little bit how to make the connection itself. It's actually very easy. Uh, all you have to do pretty much is have this uh, installed and the driver installed and everything. And then you just go... Oh, it's a long... I'm actually a PlayStation person, so I don't really... Still figuring out how to use this controller. So a long, a long press, uh, and then it'll turn on. Take into another thing to consider is uh, while the Xbox uh, lets you connect up to four, um, the plugin will only recognize one controller. So you can only use one controller with this plugin. So once you turn it on like this, and you have the connection, uh, both of these are connected, you will know that it's connected once this is a solid color and no longer blinking. Right now it's connected. So once it's connected over here, you can turn on the plugin itself. We're using again the standalone version. And if you'll press connect, it will connect. And if I now move things here, they will correspond to kind of do it out over here. So now the plugin itself will work, but you have to do another step in order to get MIDI to work. Now, if you are a scope user like me, you have over here multiple uh, MIDI drivers. So what this means is that I can open this thing and have it hog one MIDI driver, let's say scope PCI MIDI 2, a MIDI driver in the system, and then I can open, let's say for example Ableton Live, and Ableton Live will use um, MIDI driver number one, and then I can route information from my scope, uh, from the number two scope MIDI driver into 
the number one MIDI driver. So basically, for someone that has a scope or a similar setup, um, you just send, that's enough, you know, you just send the information to this second MIDI driver and it'll reach your DAW uh, once it's connected like this. If you don't have a setup like this, uh, most PC setups and most sound cards and uh, MIDI setups will only have one driver. You know, you open your DAW and it takes control of that MIDI driver and then you don't have this little thing over here and a way to interact between this and your DAW. So what you need is um, to set up something like the scope has in a virtual way. You know, it's like, uh, think of like a virtual machines and stuff like that. So it's virtual MIDI. Um, there's different ones that do that and I don't want to get into how to set it up and how to uh, get it to work because you know it's different companies what you need to do is basically go I think this is the one that is um, this is the one some of our guys tested with uh, our controller plugin it's called loop be you can uh, google it or go to the website it's a free uh, free device all you do is download it and then you have this little manager that lets you route internally the MIDI so then in your DAW you just set up, you know, uh, you set this one up to output on one of the virtual uh, virtual drivers and then you set up Ableton or whatever program you're using to input that virtual driver. Once you do all that, you press the connect button and you see that everything is working. Now you can go and um, connect uh, different various parameters from here into your DAW. So uh, for example in Ableton it's super easy. All you need to do is um, press this MIDI learn thing and then if I move something over here for example I don't know um, I've actually mapped most of these controllers to show you already so I don't know what's still available but just for the example whatever I press here now that's it it's linking it to this controller so it's, as, it's actually as easy as that uh, once you do all that it is, uh, it is linked and I actually did some pre-maps before we did this video so some of the stuff is already mapped over here so um, let's see I don't even remember so we have frequency and resonance uh, frequency is I think the yeah the X here and the Y is the resonance you notice the resonance is not going all the way up this is just a cool Ableton feature I gave it a range over here so you can give ranges to all of this uh, this is pretty cool now um, I wanted I started to talk about it but I stopped and now I do want to talk about what actually these controls do because um, they're, not, they're not reacting like normal MIDI knobs. You know, a MIDI knob has a beginning and an end. Or, for example, uh, a pad has an on and an off. Everything that you have already know in MIDI is actually defined a little bit differently than using a controller like this. For example, if you look on the XY, and we can go back to even just to uh, our representation of the controller, this is a spring, you know, once... I go like this, then the X will go all the way to the right, but if I let it go, it'll go back to the middle position. So the same as whatever control I'm controlling with it, once I let it go, it'll go back to the middle position. Now, here, this is the middle position actually, because you know, it only it doesn't go all the way to the end here. So take that into consideration. Um, these are springs that spring back to the middle on this controller. On these guys, these are toggle switches you know, but it's a toggle. It's a while it's switched, it's on. I mean, while it, while it's held. I'm sorry. When I let it go, it's off. You know, it's not like an on-off like here. Let's say I don't know here. You turn it on. You turn it off. Here, it's a momentary switch. What is called. So all these are like this. Now, in my opinion, these are very useful. If, for example, um, just to give you an idea, let's say you have a um, I don't know a lead or a drum loop, and you set up four different delays like this, four different ping pongs. And have this thing, have each one of these only control the bypass for one of them, or like the dry wet, or one of the one of these things. So the loop will be playing, and every time you hit one of these, a different delay with different times and different settings will, um, you know, be applied to that particular uh, instant in your sound. So that's just like let's say one idea. So we remember we have these two. We have two of these spring type X Ys. We have these, which are momentary switches, and also these, these are the same, these are momentary switches as well, like this, you see, the R-TOG, because it's a toggle, but these, they actually have depth to them, you see, same as here, but it's different than th this spring, it springs back to the middle, right, but this spring, it springs back to the very, the zero, from zero 
to 127. So 127, like the maximum, would be all the way, and then zero would be let go. But you also have a sensitivity where you can be anywhere in the middle. So you have two of these, the left depth and the right depth. The start and the stop are just like these. So they are momentary toggles. Um, and the last type that you have here, oh, sorry, you also have left thumb and right thumb, which are again momentary switches, which are the clicks on the L pad and the, on the LD pads. And then you have the um, digital directional pad, which acts in a little bit of a different way. It is increments of one, uh, either plus one or minus one. So they move really, really sub subtly. So what you would do with this, for example, is you would set, let's say I, would, I want a knob, you would set the value that you want, and then you can increment, you know, just a little bit from this. It's cool for, let's say, um, ex like detunes, um, maybe even stuff like, even for the cutoff, you know, if you want like little subtle, if you have a high resonance and it's really, it's really cool to find sweet spots with this. This is what I'm saying because it moves like really subtly. Actually, this is, for me, this is one of the most useful ones, actually, because this is for doing crazy stuff, you know, it's really hard also to control an XY, especially that it springs back to the middle, but this is really nice. Um, all this together, of course, you can connect everything, and you can actually get pretty crazy stuff and get pretty good with it. Now, um, I'll give you just one example, it's totally crappy. Um, I just put, uh, like, a, a kick loop and a drum loop from, from Ableton, and put a little a line over here. And it's connected to various parameters. Uh, let's take it down a little bit. Some of the parameters are connected to the uh, analog of a virtual instrument and some to the ping pong, I think, just to the time of the ping pong. I don't know, it's not even... It's just for an example, guys, so... And... It's not working because... Oh, did I actually close? I closed it for some reason. Okay. So, let's connect, and the correct MIDI, and here we go. Now it's controlling it, I'm sorry. So, okay, so this is connected to the decay, the XY is connected to the frequency and the resonance, um, and this is connected to the different timing divisions of the ping pong delay, and I think that's all I did just for the example. Uh, these are the connections right now, so just to show you guys, so you can go... So it kind of sucks, I admit, but it's just my example that sucks. Um, but you see what you can do, you know, it's uh, actually really cool. I'm looking forward myself to messing around with this. I'm actually looking forward to doing that, that stuff I mentioned before with, uh, with the bypasses, uh, with the toggle switches. Like any game, I guess, actually, you kind of suck at the beginning, you know, but if you get... It's actually, like, uh, pretty cool. It's actually like playing a game. If you get really awesome with this, you know, and then you can uh, see that platinum trophy pop, you know? and uh, brag to all your friends. So you can uh, grab this controller at our website. You will get both the VSTi and the... Uh, um, should I show the VSTi version? Okay, I'll show you guys the VSTi version. So let's, let's take another minute. So the VSTi version, uh, virtually the same. Only thing that, like I said, is that it will not let you control internally, at least in Ableton. Uh, I think I, we've tested in FL Studio. And in Cubase, it, I think it won't let you control internal um, plugins. Another thing about the VSTi version is it is 32-bit. So if you want to use it like here, like in a 64-bit host, uh, you'll have to jbridge it. It does work with jbridge though, so there's no problems. If you're a jbridge user, then you'll be happy. Um, Ableton has a little bit of a funny way of setting up uh, MIDI stuff, but um, it works. Right now, so the sound is going here. So this would be like an external device because it's in the scope, um, receiving MIDI from Ableton, and, and again, it's the same idea, you know? There we go. Oh, I, I connected it, I think, here to the, to the wets, these guys, to the wet of the phaser.
Obviously, obviously you don't have to connect it to one synth, you know, you can connect some of it to one thing and uh, I don't know why I'm even saying this, you know, you already know that you can do a ton of stuff with this thing, so check out our website, um, www.oceanswift.net, um, depending on when you're watching this video, it's either coming out um, or it's already out, uh, it's going to be around 15 bucks and it's going to give you access to some other stuff on our user area, so come check out the website and uh, you'll get a few more surprises along with this thing together especially for Ableton users. So have a go. Thanks for checking this out. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us uh, in the comments of this video or anywhere else. And we'll try to get you set up and going if you're having any problems with this. See you later. Thanks for watching.